Hi, today I'd like to talk to you about something that, well, troubles everyone, and that is getting a job. I'm going to cover the top 10 reasons why you didn't get the job. Now, some of the things I'm going to say are, might be kind of politically incorrect for some people, and these are the things that a lot of people aren't going to tell you straight up and straight, straight in front of your face. So, this is completely impromptu, so bear with me, but... As someone who's actually, throughout my career, hired a lot of people, interviewed a lot of people, I would say probably to my credit, I've probably hired at least well over a thousand people uh, throughout my career. And even currently, I still advise on at least hiring a few hundred a year uh, as an advisor, sitting in on interviews, pre-screening people, all those kinds of things. So I know what I'm speaking of. And at the same time, we seem to be in a society where a lot of people are afraid to tell you exactly what the problem is or why they didn't hire you for fear of legal problems or upsetting someone's feelings and those kinds of things so I'm gonna be very direct with you so if you are easily offended by words please turn off this video uh, go out and get a coffee or a tea or something because this is not gonna be for you but if you're really sincere about what you want to do with regards to getting a job and moving up in an organization, whether it be an entry-level job or whether it be uh, a professional-level level job. These are some of probably the things that the errors or the things that you're not thinking about that you may have made uh, a mistake in and for whatever reason uh, didn't get the job. So let's, let's talk about it. So number 10, the first thing that comes to mind or the, the 10th reason people don't get the job, as far as I can see, is that they argue about the pre-screening uh, employment test. A lot of places for higher level jobs or level, uh, jobs where English is, is a requirement and it's, you have to be completely fluent, the ability to communicate is a very important thing. I'm mumbling or fuddling at this point because, as I said, this is impromptu, so I'm totally off the top of my head, unscripted, uh, with the exception of the 10 points actually in front of me, just as a reminder. Uh, but people argue uh, when they go and they sit down and they, they do this pre-screening test. And the pre-screening test usually is multiple choice questions. And it's, it's a no-brainer. Like there's, there's either true, false, or it's A, B, C, or D. Uh, but people, because they can't understand or they don't get the question, they will argue with the interviewer, with the pre-screening person, that, hey, this, the answer is not on this test. And they will argue upside down. This does not come off as a very professional thing to do. A lot of places, when they give you these pre-screening tests, the answer, well, the answer, first of all, is in there. That's the first thing. They're not going to try to give you a trick question. Some of the wording might be a little bit different, difficult for you, but they're not going to hide the answer from you. It's not in their best interest. It's a waste of time. So out of those choices, A, B, C, or D, or true or false, the answer is actually there. Uh, so don't make an idiot of yourself. I'm putting it bluntly. Don't make an idiot of yourself or a fool and say, look, the answer is not there. I know the right answer and it's, it's not there. That just makes you look really silly, and that's the number 10 reason a lot of people don't get to the next level. Uh, the ninth reason that a person might not be hired is that they showed up with a friend or a relative. Now, it's okay to have a friend or a relative drive you to the interview or to apply for the job, but it's not okay to have them sit next to you in the waiting room while you fill out the paperwork, and it looks like they're coaching you filling out the paperwork. How does this look? Imagine if you hired someone for a job or you're thinking about hiring someone for a job and they show up with their mother or with their brother who's maybe older or younger or whatever the case may be and they're sitting there and it's obvious that they're helping them fill out the application. Well, you're going to start thinking to yourself, well, is this person able to think independently on them, uh, with themselves? Are they, are they able to show up? by themselves and do a job or do they lack the confidence do they lack the the personal security to go forth and do what they have to do so once again this is a very negative thing so do not show up or at least if someone drops you off have them drop you off and wait downstairs or in a coffee shop or something don't have them sit next to you especially and, and help you out filling out the job application that is absolutely crazy and insane it doesn't make you look very good at all it makes you look highly insecure and highly unprofessional the eighth thing actually is something that really troubles me being a, a former military person at the same time uh, being in public safety and service for like 35 over 35 years is someone knows that they have to come and they have to go and fill out a job application or go for an interview that's a given 
So just like you put on clothes and you get ready to go and you be sure that you have proper bus fare or uh, fuel in your, in your car, they show up without a pen. What is this? You show up without a pen. Do you not think that you're going to have to fill out some paperwork? Do you not think that you're going to have to sign something? Oh, well, it's an office. I'll just borrow a pen. Do you realize how that looks? That makes you look like a complete, well, <laughs> makes you look completely incompetent. You didn't plan. You didn't plan ahead to show up with a pen, a simple pen. You, uh, in, instead, you have to go and borrow off uh, an applicant, even perhaps a fellow applicant who you're competing against for the same job. Maybe you have to borrow the pen from the receptionist or even from the person that's going to be your next boss. How does that look? That looks terrible. It looks like you're totally unprepared. You don't plan ahead. You're not, you don't pay attention to details. Would you hire someone who has those, those qualities? Probably not. So show up with a pen, not a pencil. I've also seen people fill things out in pencil, which is totally ludicrous in this day and age. Show up with a proper pen. It doesn't have to be an expensive pen. I, you know, you can get them at the dollar store. Bring a pen. Very important. Uh, the seventh reason that people don't get the job is that they're not dressed properly. Now, I'm not saying you have to wear a tie, you have to wear a jacket, okay? But let me tell you, perhaps rather than tell you what you should wear, let me tell you what you shouldn't wear. You're going for a job interview. It's a workplace environment. Now, unless you're, you're working or you're going to go for a job in one of these other environments, it might be different. But for most places where you're going for a job, first of all, do not show up in a tracksuit unless it's a gym that you're applying for. Do not show up in a t-shirt, shorts, or sandals unless you're going to the beach. Uh, do not show up in uh, you know, a uniform or blue jeans, baseball cap, wrapper, or club wear. Like, what is it? This is a place of business. Understand this. So if you come in walking in like that, it, it tells it basically says that you haven't really had a real job in in some time or a job that applies to what you're applying for unless as i said you're you're applying at the beach or at a club or something like that so you would that would be appropriate for those particular environments but if you're coming into an office uh if you're applying to be anything from you know a sales a salesperson to uh, a person that works in an office or a security guard or something like that why on earth would you show up wearing shorts or, or track wear or looking like you just came from the gym. You want to put your best foot forward. I don't care if the job is paying minimum wage or, or you know, six figures a year. You actually have to look that you mean business, that you're serious about this. You walk in looking like you just worked out and you got the sweat off the, you know, off the gym outfit or, you know, you look like you're ready to go to the club. It, it just doesn't look very good, uh, trust me. And as I said, you don't have to wear a jacket and a tie. I mean, those days are over. There were, that was maybe 50 years ago. You had to show up with the tie and everything else. And ladies had to wear a skirt and the whole thing. But you don't have to do that. But please, you know, you know, leave the, leave the uh, you know, sandals at home. Leave the T-shirt the at home. If you don't have uh, something to wear or you feel sort of insecure about this after hearing what I'm saying, you know, just borrow a jacket, get a jacket from somewhere. Maybe you don't even, you don't even need a jacket. Just wear a button up shirt. If you're a guy, uh, you know, you can leave the top button undone or you don't need to wear a tie, but just look like a little bit more presentable. Uh, because bear in mind, you're going to re represent the company no matter what you do. And even if they give you a uniform, even the job that you're applying for gives you a uniform, how well you wear your clothes tells them how well you're going to wear the uniform. So please, you know, don't lose the job because you didn't dress properly. And that's the seventh reason people, people uh, don't get the job. The sixth reason, oddly enough, is because they're late. When you have an appointment to show up for a job, and I mean a firm appointment, if they say be here for 10 a.m., you show up there 15 minutes ahead of time. You plan on being there for 9.45. If you know that you have to take the, the uh, public transit and it takes you an hour to get from your house to wherever you have to be, Leave an extra 15 minutes early. Plan on being there for 9, uh, 9.45, not 10. If it's an 11 o'clock appointment, that's 10.45. So that way, if, take for instance, there are delays, and there typically are on public transit or even driving, uh, you have at least a 15-minute buffer. So you're not rushing in and all, you know, you're sweating and you look all out of order. So please, 
do not arrive late. Be sure that you're there on time. If you worry about these things, please, it's to your own benefit to get this job. How badly do you want this job? It's to your own benefit to be sure that you're there at least, you know, 15 minutes early. So if they say your appointment's at 1, be there for 12.45. That's 15 minutes to 1. Okay? Plan that way. Um, the fifth reason that people don't get the job, and this is like now we're going in the top five reasons, the fifth reason is bad hygiene. You walk in, or not necessarily you, but people walk in and they're all sweaty, they, they, their breath stinks, you know, they, they have a, it smells like they've got body odor, like, like you wouldn't believe, uh, you know, I don't have this problem, but their hair is all over the place. You know, please, take some time, you know, don't go in there at the same time with, with perfume that is so strong that it, it turns people off and people are allergic uh, to different types of smells and perfumes these days so you have to be very careful about strong perfumes but bad hygiene is a major problem like you go in there with your you know with bad breath you're you know so you're talking to someone and people are too polite they're not going to tell you hey your breath stinks what they're going to do is and this is a telltale sign if you're talking to someone and they step back even an inch or two or they just go like this when you're talking to them just inadvertently go like this you better check yourself your breath is off be sure your hands are washed before you offer someone your hand to shake a hand. Uh, you know, be sure to use deodorant. Shouldn't have to say this, but needless to say, some people wonder about this stuff. And if you like to wear cologne or perfume, tone it down. If you usually do two squirts, do one squirt or one little splash, and, and be sure that it's not an overpowering cologne or perfume. But, you know, a lot can be said about the, the, the uh, use of soap and water and deodorant, trust me. So please, be sure that your hygiene looks good, or is good. Uh, the fourth reason that people don't get the job is that they just don't know how to fill out forms correctly. They give you, give you an application for employment. First of all, hopefully you brought a pen. Remember that? We talked about that. Uh, the next thing is, is, when you're filling out a form, read the form first. Just don't automatically read it and then fill it out. Read the whole form first. It's not a test. Typically, people don't give you a time limit on filling out the employment application. I mean, unless you really take like hours on end for an application that's only two pages. But generally, read the form first before you fill it out. Be sure you understand what is being asked. A lot of people fail at this point because, number one, they leave blanks on the form. They don't fill in things correctly. Or they just, just leave it blank. And do they leave it blank because they don't know or because it doesn't apply? If you find something that doesn't apply to you, on the form, you just put N-A. N-A means not applicable. That means it doesn't apply to me. So just put N-A in capital letters. Uh, the other thing is, as well, is just be sure that you review the form and you fill it out correctly. What is asked? Take your time. It's not a race. The other thing that I find that really drives me crazy is on the form, it says, please print in ink. Well, first of all, as I said, I've had people, I have had people fill out forms in crayon, believe it or not, uh, in pencil. Uh, they didn't get the job, by the way. Uh, I've had people fill out the forms in crazy color inks, like pink and purple. And, you know, that might be good if you're f applying for an arts job, but if you're applying for a regular everyday job, blue or black ink, please. But let's talk about printing versus cursive. And I don't know, maybe people don't understand what that's all about. So let me explain this to you. I mean, I'm assuming a lot of people do. But if you can see this, okay. Okay, this here is is printing. Okay, this is printing. This is cursive. Okay? So basically, this is printing. See how that's printed? This is cursive. Cursive is when you looks like you're you're doing your signature. Okay? And printing is you're printing in block letters. The application will ask you to print with the exception of your signature at the bottom, typically. And the reason they ask you to print is so that they can read it. Not everybody's handwriting, cursive, is is the same. And some of it is very hard to read. We always kid around and say, well, doctors, when they write things, you can't read it because, you know, in the cursive. And, you know, there's a lot of them theories because, of course, the longer you stay in school, the more you make notes, well, at least in the old days, and your, your penmanship gets more sloppier and sloppier. And as a result, it's harder to read. So doctors spending typically nine years in university can't 
write properly or can't do cursive. But please print on that application. Do not use cursive. Because once again, an, uh, someone is going to get this application, this employment form from you, and if they see that there's blanks, there's things in there that, that you know, that should be there that aren't there, you've left blanks in there, blank spaces, and then not only that, the immediate thing says print and you've done cursive, they're going to say, well, either this person, A, doesn't understand English very well, uh, B, uh, they just are very sloppy, they don't really care, the job doesn't mean that much to them, or they just simply, you know, they can't comprehend what they're doing, and why should we hire them? So you have to fill out the form correctly. The form itself is a test to see how much detail, uh, how much of a person going to detail you're into. And, and they want to hire people that are detail oriented, that pay attention, not people that things can slip by. So that's the number four, that you did not complete the uh, application form correctly. The third thing is that uh, in the interview or just speaking to the person, they have a know-it-all attitude. And I understand that, you know, you have to be assertive. You have to go into the interview and say, hey, you know, I'm, you know, I know what I'm doing. I'm confident. Do not confuse putting forth confidence into being a know-it-all. If you go in there and they say, well, we have health and safety training, and this is, a, this is a standard thing that I've come across, and I say, well, we have health and safety training, and you have to spend an afternoon uh, in our health and safety training program. And then they say, oh, no, I've already done that. I don't need that. I, I don't care. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to waste my time doing that. How does that sound? It doesn't sound too good. You see, under, understand that there's health and safety regulations in a lot of places um, where, you know, when you have a new employee, it doesn't matter if they've had it or not, they have to go through your particular health and safety training program to ensure that they're safe in the work environment that you have. Uh, likewise, uh, things uh, such as, uh, you know, HASCOM, WIMIS, GHS, depends on where you are, uh, that has to be typically reviewed every year. So, you know, when they tell you that, well, you know, you have to go out and you be willing, you, you have to go out and, and take our health and safety program and they say, oh, I've already done that. You know, you can, you can basically say to them, if you want people to know, the interviewer to know that you've already done it, but you have to show a willingness to learn this stuff again or to be refreshed on it. So rather than say, oh, I've already done that again, I, I do that, I don't want to do that again, just simply say, well, you know, I have gone through this, this training initially at my previous employer. I have taken a course uh, back in whatever year it was. Um, but, you know, if that's what you require, I'm willing to do that. But don't go in there and say, oh, I know, I know, I know. I don't, if you know everything, why the heck aren't you running your own damn business? I'm just being honest with you. You came to me looking for a job. I didn't come looking for you. So if you're coming looking to me for a job and you want to work under the, the terms of my company... You know, I'm not going to go and, and have you tell me what to do or how to run my business or that you should be exempt from something that everyone else has to be subject to. So, you know, that's, that's basically it. So you don't go in there with an, uh, you know, you have a know-it-all attitude. The second reason uh, is actually when people get turned down for jobs or you don't get the job is they simply didn't do their research. We get to all these points, all these points I've just covered, and maybe you've, got, you've passed all those. And you sit down in front of the person and they're interviewing you and you haven't got a bloody idea who their clients are. You haven't got an idea with regards to uh, what their business is, or maybe you generally do. Uh, you have absolutely no idea about the job that you've applied for. I mean, you know, what does it take, guys, to sit down, you know, everybody's got the internet, or most people have the internet on their phones, on their computers. What does it take the night before, if not a few days before, to sit down or before you apply for the job or before you even show up to look at the website read the website read about the company how it was founded how it was started read maybe they might show off some of their clients or projects read up on the company know who you're applying to know what type of role you're going to be into don't just show up I don't care even if it's a minimum wage job you know with minimum wage jobs you have a higher uh, number of competitors a higher number of applicants to compete against and you're not going to go in there and try to make yourself look like the best out of out of all the masses that come there? I mean, it doesn't make sense. How badly do you want the job? Or maybe if you don't want the job that badly, stay at home, watch TV, you know, eat the potato chips. Because, you know, an employer can't use you. So do your research. Know what you're getting into. At the same time, you know, if you don't do your research, you're going to be like a week or two into the job and say, oh, geez, this is what I didn't what I think it was it was supposed to be. So, you know, to heck with this. I'm, I'm we going home. I'm quitting. I mean, that doesn't look good for you. You've wasted the employer's time. You've wasted your time. 
So do your research. Know who you're applying to. Know the company. Know their clients. Know their history. Uh, you, know, you know, I can't stress this enough. This is the number two reason why people don't get the job. You know, I don't care, if, as I said, whether it's minimum wage or six figures, people do not do their research. They get lazy. They get complacent. Don't be that person. Be the guy or girl who gets the job and moves up in the organization. And it might start at minimum wage, but you become a manager in no short time. And, in, you know, you're getting there, you're getting the benefits, you're getting everything. But don't be just someone who doesn't know what they're applying to. Uh, if you don't know what you're applying to, anything you end up will just be fine at any particular pay rate and any particular level of opportunity. And that shouldn't be you. Uh, the number one reason why people do not get the job, the number one reason why I don't give, the, give people the job, is because they never say how they're going to contribute to the company. They never say what they can bring to the job. They're just like everyone else. They go through all the same classic phrases, the, the words that they're all, you know. They're, I'll be honest with you, there, there are job centers out there, free job centers. And I always say you get what you pay for, but that's another story. But they're good-hearted. I mean, volunteer job centers, and if it wasn't for these people, I mean, you know, a lot of people wouldn't have any hope and help in the world. And I, I, I appreciate that, and I recognize that. And for the most part, they do do a good job to get you started. But they also the, the downside to these freebie job centers and, and community job centers is they're a good start. But then people get lazy. The, the clients get lazy and they don't pursue anything further. But, you know, what they will tell you is they will give you canned or you might say scripted lines for interviews, scripted lines for resumes. Especially there's also places that crank out resumes like crazy. And it's, it's just really silly because as an employer, I see that. So I wonder if the person who is giving me these scripted lines or giving me these these resumes, if they have had an original thought ever with regards to employment or the job they're applying to, because it sure as heck doesn't look like it. And I don't want people that are clones of everyone else. I want people that are going to do the job that I can count on and that can communicate. And as I said, the number one reason that they don't get the job with me is because, and most other people, is because they do not say how they're going to make the difference in the job you know sitting there and I say well why do you think that you're good for this job and they look at their shoes literally and they say to me oh I want to help people like what the heck is that you want to help people go out on the on the street corner and, and give free advice set up a booth or you know you want to help people go out and donate to the homeless I mean come on let's let's be honest about this and I'm not trivializing any of those situations they're very serious situations but come on, what I'm trying to emphasize to you is if you're going in for a job interview or you're going in for a job, when you do your research, which is the number two reason why people don't get the job because they don't do it, is go in there and think about how you, based on your experience, your good things, the things you're capable of doing, how you can go and do that job better than anyone else. And tell me, tell the interviewer why you think you can do that job better than anyone else and what you offer, right? It's not all about you when you go into an employer to uh, to get the job. You think the, jo the job is just going to be handed to you? No, it's not. You have to earn it, just like everything else in this life. So go in there and tell the employer, say, all right, I th really feel that based on my experience, I can do a better job for you because, okay, in my previous job, I resolved a lot of problems, a lot of customer problems, specifically, and then you can name certain things. Or I can see that you're trying to get into uh, doing business-to-business -business sales away from the consumers. So I've done a lot of business-to-business -business sales, and I'm familiar with or something like that. You've got to leverage. You've got to be able to apply that knowledge that you've had or your own personal interest. Take, for instance, if you're applying at an art store, and they say, well, what you know, how can you sell our, 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 our oil paint, our, our oil paints to our clients and say, well, you know, I haven't really worked in that field, as you can see, but as a hobby, I'm a painter and I studied art and, you know, I understand colors and see, this is differentiation. This is telling people how you're different from every other candidate they see. So please, number one, be sure that you tell the employer how you uniquely can do that job over anyone else based on your experience and your own insights and we all have experience and insights that we can bring to a different project and to different projects so that's very very important so just let's just to recap the reason 10 reasons why you won't get a job number 10 
you argue about the pre-screening test and saying that the answers are not there when they really are. Number nine, you show up with a friend or a relative to the interview. Number eight, you show up without a pen, which is very embarrassing. You have to borrow one. Number seven, you're not dressed properly. Number six, you're late for the appointment. Number five, you bad hygiene. Your breath stinks. You've got body odor. Your hair's all over the place. Uh, number four, you did not complete the employment application correctly, or you didn't even bother. You left some blanks out there. You didn't print. You used cursive handwriting instead of printing. Uh, number three, okay, you have a know-it-all attitude. You're not willing to learn something new, and you're already to put someone in their place and say, "Lo, I don't need to know this. I already know this. Number two, you did not do your research on the company. Ladies and gentlemen, please use the web. Every, you can use it for everything else. Go on the website, check out the company, check out especially the about and about their clients and, and learn all you can about the company. And number one, think about the job and how you can make the difference. What talents you bring to that particular job. And that's my video. I apologize for the rant. This is totally impromptu, but this is stuff that had to be said. And I tried not to be too politically incorrect, but you know very few people view very few HR people are because they're very tight and strict they're not gonna say such things to you but I'm being honest with you and I really do hope that if you if you listen to this video I know some of the things you may find unbelievable but other things if there's one little thing out of there you can take out of the 10 that's gonna help you get that job please follow it do it give it a try and you know all the best wishing you all the best and please be sure to like the video somewhere down here. And if you feel this is useful, feel free to uh, let other people see this video and share it. Thanks again.